Welcome one and all. Why start? Now this is, you know, I know a world renowned brand. It's very exclusive, very exclusive. So not everybody can own one of these luxury knives. And it's the LK5025 50. What's half of 50? 25, 50, 25. But it not only comes in orange, it comes in green as well. And of course, we're going to, it's a spinner knife too. Did you notice that? Oh, and it's tip down only because only the best knives in the world are allowed to be tip down carry. So how deep is it getting? You got your waders on. And, oh, the design flow is just incredible. Look at how it just melts into that bolster. Yes, it does. But let's see if blade to handle length is worth a shit. Oh, <laughs> here we go. And we're, whoosh, well, that'll cut my finger off. And, okay, it's yeah, decent enough. And, yes, I can feel the tip of that blade. Okay, yes. Got a long enough blade. You could bag it up here and melted into that damn bolster there, buddy, since you're world-renowned. Um, okay, and there's the backspacer. It's orange, but you can get it green. So you can get these accents in green as well. But I got them in orange, of course. Why not? You know, it's the time of the year. And let's see how lovely the drop is on this. Of course, it's world-class. Only the Holt Spectre can even start to approach the loveliness of this knife. But this one is currently very inexpensive for some reason. $30.40 and that's before discount. Okay? So now it's like $27. We're talking Ganzo here. Uh, 9.31 inches. Actually, it's supposed to be D2, which don't, you know, don't, uh, you know, bet your house on that. It's, it's amazing because the Y starts that we checked, they were like S35, those new upscale ones. Yeah, they were S35, but the D2 ones were not. They were like 8CR14. So how insane is that? Um, I don't know. They got their bar stock uh, screwed up or something. You know, how are you right on the high-end ones and then the low-end ones when it doesn't make any difference, you're not. There's your lockup in the blue, the beautiful blue coated steel liners. Uh, and there's 30%, I guess. I just can't get over the loveliness of that tip down only. God, this tip up would have been nice and they didn't need to spread that yoke out. They could have done just like Benchmade, you know, boom, boom, top to bottom or something like that. Or, you know, like my two you knife bruiser, just do a deep carry like that, you fools. And then uh, you don't do that. But I don't know where it came from or I guess traditional like uh, European knives and stuff, hunting knives, things like that have been tipped down for some reason. And of course, the paramilitary too comes in a tip down, you know, with the, I have to unscrew the pocket clip and move it to tip up, but they give you tip up, tip down, right? Right and left. But this one just gives you tip down, one side only. And then here's your lovely little uh, Y start uh, thing where you can use a thin bladed, you know, screwdriver if you want but I mean they actually have a tool for that which I have so I mean that's the only reason I'm going to review this knife is I got the tool to open it up what the hell no really the only reason I got this knife was because first of all I like budget knives so I was curious about that second of all the you know the the, the style the design is somewhat intriguing to me and certainly not for the least reason, but it's big. It's a big knife. Shit, it's a big knife. Big ass knife. And I, I like that. Four inch blade, of course, 100 millimeters at least. Nine and a quarter overall at 23 and a half centimeters. You see what I'm saying there? So yeah, I mean, I like that. Now, if I can find my damn caliper, 
it's hiding from me. Let's see how fat this thing is. Ooh, 0.62 of an inch. So there's a handful at 15.8 millimeters. And we're coming up on four millimeter blade stock. 3.7 at 0.14. Okay. Let me see if I... I got a giant piece of paper here. Okay. You know, yeah. It's, it's reasonable there. Uh, let's put that to an end right there. Okay, okay, so yeah, I mean, it's sharp out of the box. Uh, yeah. You know, actually, this uh, G10 inlay in this blade is pretty seamless, as amazing as that may seem. And actually, yeah, that is too. That's pretty nice. Uh, backspacer, I mean, at least it's got one. And so it does tube the lanyard hole. Go figure, and it's cut away here so it doesn't lay, you know, on your paracord there for the lanyard. I mean, that's cut away so it, it relieves that. Let me see if they did anything in here. Oh, shit. They even uh, skeletonized the liners? Wow. I mean, they kind of went all out, didn't they? Oh, it comes in a box. Does does this, what what box does this look like? Come on. Come on. What box does that look like? <laughs> Do you think same box manufacturer? Yeah, I'm thinking so. I even wrote on it, 5025. But does it say 5025 here? No, it doesn't say 5025. It Well, their SKU does, okay? 5025 OR, so. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, and there's nothing going on here. You know, it's just what it is. And I don't, I, I can't remember anything being in here now. Just, just the way the two sun knives come. Oh, you think you're a big guy, huh? How about the Vandal comes? Ooh, you know what? These are exactly the same length. Nine and a quarter, nine and a quarter. $30, hell no. <laughs> hell no. Button lock. So, uh, yeah, big difference there. Got the same box, though. So you're in good shape, you know? You've moved up in the world. All right. I mean, it's centered. Um, I'm not getting any blade play or lock rock, and it's relatively sharp out of the box, and you got contoured G10 handles. I mean, hell, there's... There's knives that are like Benchmade or other that are GFN or, you know, FRN, GRN, whatever, or not even G10, right? And they're getting all kinds of damn money. So, okay. I mean, you got that. I just hate this crap, don't you? I do not like this hardware at all. Just give me torque stuff. I mean, just get out of here. Yeah, and it's on both sides like that. Only, you know, you get the loveliness of unscrewing both these screws just to clear that pivot. So I can figure out which way I'm going in when I disassemble this dog. Now, let's turn the scale on and weigh this thing up. And it's not a lightweight, but it's not too bad at 153 grams. Let's roll it around to ounces. Yeah, 5.4. I mean, you know, it's not the end of the world. It's not super light. It's not that bad. Uh, flips out pretty well. Disengages. Reasonably decent drop. Okay. Um, you know, if you back up, you got to kind of back up in here, but thank God. I mean, because he here's your pass through. It seems like a long way back. Okay, but you disengage. But it still hits you on the thumb. Thank God. Because if it didn't and you're back here, yikes. So um, just make sure you stay right all in this hole here and like right up to the edge of it. So it'll it'll get over the detent ball and it'll still hit you in the thumb. So it can give you that fidget factor, you know, that you might want to have with it. Not saying that it's the most lovely knife and uh, uh, the plunge looks better than I, that first side I was going, that's off. No, eh, it's okay. 
So, uh, kind of thumb ramp. This is kind of weird. I, I didn't really know what to think about this here at this bolster. It's really kind of a guard. Uh, there's good and bad to it. First of all, yeah, good and grippy and your finger, your thumb doesn't slide over. And down here, your finger doesn't slide over either. You got a little cutaway here for sharpening. Sharpening shouldn't be difficult either. It's not like it's M390 on there, brother. Take a look at why start. Um, and you could look just wherever you want. Um, but uh, I was looking at White Mountain because they do have some other models in that are recent models, okay? And so I usually look at Y-Start and Harns just because I kind of got them in the same boat. Although I'd probably call Harns, I'd probably give them the edge on more, I'm more intrigued with their designs. And I think probably their fit and finish is a little bit better or they just seem a little bit more sophisticated um, for the dollar. But, okay, but, you know, you never know what's going to go on. So th they have some new models. I haven't picked them up yet, but I thought they were intriguing. And, you know, I just did recently uh, videos on the uh, Y-Start, and there was a model with S35VN, that kind of thing. So it's really strange that they would reach out into that uh, area with titanium carbon fiber and do that. That's not where I see their market. Uh, I think they, you know, it'd be like Ganza doing something like that. But this is okay. I mean, these are good user beaters, and this is a big old knife. So, I mean, you got enough blade to get things done there. So let's get the uh, infamous um, <laughs> specialty tool out. The only good thing about this is that in here... Um, there's a carousel of all kinds of bits, including, you know, the Torx bits and stuff that you would need. So it's not that you're just buying it for this. God forbid. If it was, it's not worth it. Uh, and I think these were around 15 or 20 bucks for the whole damn tool. But, you know, held a knife ain't much more than that. Um, okay. So, but it does work better than just a mini screwdriver. And let's forego using that tool anymore and just use my regular here, number six and number six, and pull this dog apart and see what the hell's on the inside for a rockin' 27 after discount. And here we go. So, G10, baby. You all uptown and... You got that blue coated loveliness here, steel, but it's it's pretty sturdy. So okay, uh, and then of course the uh, the stop pin fell out, and that actually that's pretty thick little dog. Now let's see the bearings like that. You know the bearings. I bet the bearings on a five hundred dollar knife don't cost sixty cents more than the bearings on a. $30 knife, dude. What do you think? Get off of there. Okay, so we do actually have a flat spot on the pivot. You know, isn't that amazing that they would actually do that? But they did. Okay, so what does that mean to me? Oh, okay, so we have a flat. Okay, so it's got to reach apart across, and then it's going to... Because you can see right here, I mean, I'm not taking this off, you know. But I guess it's got to face that way when it goes across and clicks into the other uh, liner. So, okay. But yeah, it's skeletonized. And what a lovely orange backspacer that is. So you're good there. Okay, so not exactly rocket science, is it? Uh, let's throw these bearings down in there, not ceramic, but, you know, I really don't care, so throw on the blade. I ain't got much to have to worry about. Oh, okay, let me put this on. I gotta, do have to worry about that. And, come on, come on, sit down.
lay down these. Wasn't I going to put some lube on it just for the hell of it? I think I've got plenty in there now. Let me see if I can get this thing fitted up to that squared off area. And then smack down there. Okay. Now, give me my damn pivot screw. Because you know what? You damn near going to have to take that pocket clip off from the other side. Ordinarily, unless you can sneak underneath that pocket clip and push that down because that's going to, that'll tumble down right to there and you're going to have to push it back in so it goes all the way through the liners and everything. And I did myself, so I would have been probably just as well served to take the pocket clip off. Okay, so we got that cinched down. Now we got screws. And these are number sixes, of course. So let's put them to bed. And I think we'll be done, done. Uh -uh. Come on. Okay. All right. Let me see. Oh, we're straightened back up. We're centered. And. Okay. Whoop, whoop. Wrong direction. There we go. Okay. Uh, this is something that if it strikes your fancy, um, it's all right. You know, I mean, the ergos are reasonably decent. Uh, reverse grip is fine. Uh, you know, so, and it's contoured. Uh, it's got reasonably decent materials. And, uh, okay. It could be used for a good old user carry beater. And uh, why not? Take care, my friends. You know what we do. We love them knives, so you guys stay sharp.